All right, what I'm now going to show you is something that's called parenting. So probably when you're getting into animation, you are going to try to make something of your own and you will want, probably want to have your character to be holding stuff or carrying stuff or just some accessories like a hat and you want them to get parented or attached to your character, right? So in this case, I used um, and created a baseball bat. So let's say we want to put the baseball bat in this hand and we want the baseball bat obviously move along with the hand. So you can just place with the main controller of the basal bed, in this case, placed in the hand. So you have, a, most of the time you have a main controller and something that's called a gimbal controller or an in-between controller. It's best that you always use the outside controllers and then the inside because the outside controller controls the entire thing, but the inside controller does not control the outside controller. So there's some kind of hierarchy going on, right? So let's place the controller right in the hand of Michele. Something around here. It's so just a hand, so it's more like a grabbing uh, kind of feel. Like this, like so. We can move our thumb. That's a bit much. Like so, and well, there we kind of have it, maybe a bit better, yes. Let's now adjust the fingers a bit, better attaches. So, okay, so now our baseball bed is in the hand of Michele. I'm now going to use the IK, IK attribute of our arm. So it's the one where you can move the entire arm separately of the body, since that's gonna be a bit easier to demonstrate everything. But it, once you switch, you will see it will keep working. So what you would do, now it's in the correct place. You would go to the rigging tab right here then in the constraints you can find a lot of constraints. These are called parenting options or constraint options. Well, here we have parent. So let me dedock this. So click on this. And now we have a loose option box. So the selection order or selection hierarchy matters a lot here, right? So you should select the parent and then the child. So the thing that you have to listen to and the thing that's gonna be listening to the previous one, right? So then here at parents, you can find an option box. Here it's important in this case to use maintain offsets because if you don't, things are going to get snapped into the same world location. That's not what we need, so let me control Z and use maintain offsets. We want that the child is following everything, so translate all, rotate all, and the weight on one. Click apply. Now, if you move the arm, the baseball bat is moving, same thing for rotation. So that's working perfectly. So just to show you what would happen if you would do the other way around so the baseball bat and then the hand if you move the hand nothing's happening but if you move the baseball bat the entire arm is moving so this all depends on your needs but most of the time you will be making your character the boss of the object so Let's take this and take this and press apply. 
Okay, so now it's following again. As you can see, you're probably wondering now, like, okay, yeah, but we have the screen controller. Well, now the screen controller is the, is going to be able to move without getting changed by the parent. That's why we have a second controller within, so we can make tiny adjustments or overlap or follow through actions or drag that we can all adjust here without having to adjust the bigger controller. Because if you would change this like this with the bigger controller and then move your main controller, everything is snapping back. So here you can see the blue values. This means there's already some kind of input and you cannot overwrite this input right now. As you can see, there is a way to override this input by selecting the controller and pressing S. Now you can see suddenly there's another attribute here. It's called blend parent. So now if you would move, it's not, not snapping back because the blend parent is at zero. If you would put it at one, it would snap, right? So you can have some kind of animation with this. So you can probably press S here and then through frames later, press S again. And that's in the beginning, let's put it on zero, right? So you can think of it like a Thor's hammer or like in the, in the mythologies or something else. You can make an animation of the hand. I think I controlled it a bit too far. Okay. So the blend parent is zero. And you can see, maybe I should make it a bit bigger. So we put it here at zero and let's also put it at zero for frame 12, right? So I made an animation on the hand going from there to there. You can see the basal bed is not moving until frame 12, then it's going to try to go back to the hand because the value is going back to one. If you, if you take a look at this value right here, it's zero, 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 it's not moving along and then it's snapping to the hand. So why would we need this if you're able to move the bed freely with this controller anyway? Well, maybe you want to switch hands. So let me control Z, entire thing. Okay. And let's put this at one. Okay. So now it should be following the hand completely. Yes. So, so let's say we want to switch hands. So we have our baseball bed. I will just put some animation on it and then bring it to here. Okay, so it's moving towards there. Let's also animate the shoulder controller to go open. Uh, that's a bit more logical, right? Okay, and now you want to grab with this arm. So it's going here. And now with this hand, you want to grab it. So let's also put some animation on this. Okay, let me quickly... Okay. So I have the pole vector, the blue thing to move the arm. Okay, so let's put this in place very quickly. Okay, like this, and then curl the hand. Maybe it's a bit too much of curl. And then the thumb. Okay, so on this frame, we want to switch as from parent. So we want the 
this hand to let go of the basal bed and this hand to pick it back up. And then this hand will go away again. So at fin 35, the hand should be here and it should be holding the basal bed. So at 20 we switch. So that means we do the same thing again. We select the second hand, select the basal bed, constraint, parent constraint, same things. Click. Now if we are going to have a look at our basal bed, we have two attributes right here. It's right hand and left hand. As you can see now, the basal bed is following and left hand.